This is Alexander Lescott, host of the podcast Real Talk Guidance. This is uh, my first official solo cast today. Um, before today, I didn't know exactly what to talk about. I didn't know where to start. You know, so much to share, so much in my mind. Um, so I think today I had a breakthrough and that's why I decided to talk to you, to my listeners, to my audience. But first, let's talk about fear. I had to conquer fear, fear of disappointing my listeners or even worse, fear of disappointing myself. And um, I'm gonna paraphrase Regan Hillier. She says that no one can be fearless, but everyone can learn to live with fear. Everyone can learn to dance with fear. Everyone can bring fear along for the ride. You know, while we drive towards our goals and fear is in the back seat, we can tell fear that it will be okay and that's how we can tame it. Because fear is there to make us feel safe, keep us in our comfort zone, making sure that we survive this lifetime. It was an evolutionary necessity to have it. But as we become more aware, more knowledgeable, we know what we're doing is right. So that is our job to actually tell our fear to take the back seat. We have to actually accept that, they, that it exists. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm taking my fear and putting it in the back seat and I'm telling him, come on in, stay there. I'm gonna still go forward. I'm gonna still drive towards my goals and I'm gonna bring you along for the journey. And again, it's all gonna be okay. So that said, like uh, most influencers nowadays uh, that I see on social media, and you know uh, a few of them if you've been on, on Instagram, if you've been on, on TikTok, Facebook. Um, I actually realized that I didn't have massive success with many things that they're portraying, you know? So that's maybe why I had uh, the weight, you know, taking a few steps back, trying to find out what was my message. So I, I didn't have massive success with money. Wasn't the most successful let's say at, at my work, uh, wasn't the best student in school, w wasn't the best, you know, like friend, family member, networker, wasn't the most spiritual, you know? And, and that's why I was, you know, doubting that I could actually come here and, and offer some value. But it hit me, something hit me. By listening to many, many, many great minds, and I've been talking here about Regan Hillier, uh, it hit me that I've, I've been working on something. And, and most of you listening may have been working on that without knowing. Everything we see around us is most of the time just the 20% tip of the iceberg. 80% is underwater, underground, and the backstage, back, store like you want to call it we see the front store we see the the nice and glittery things so i realized i was working all that time all along on my 80 percent and i'm going to explain what this is so while everyone else is focusing on the 20 percent like uh, regan hillier says most people that have success most people that actually one day just appears out of nowhere were working on their 80 percent and you can't get the 20% right if you haven't worked on your 80%. So the 80% is actually the structure, the mindset, the beliefs. And the 20% is actually the strategy, the ideas, the, the recipe for success. So most of the time when you see master classes, you see uh, ways of actually getting to new markets, a bunch of great ideas out there in order to be financially successful. They all talk about the 20%. Some courses will talk about the 80%, but they all focus on that 20%. But you can't succeed in that 20% 
until you work on the 80%. I'm going to give you a little example. I'm going to give, uh, tell you a story, okay? And you'll, you'll understand. Visualize this with me. I have a friend that comes to my house. We're in the backyard. We're talking. He knows me. I know him. You know, there's a, a, a trust that has been built over the time, over the years. Then I give him a shovel. And I say, let's say Roger. I say, Roger, look here. And I point to the ground. And I say, dig. And then Roger looks at me and says, why? And that's the word, guys. That's, that's the word I want you to, to grasp. So he has the tool. I gave him a new task. So he has the goal. And he's asking why. So first and foremost, and that 80%, the mindset, you need to figure out your why. And everybody else and the world needs to figure that out for themselves. We all have a different why. We all have a different mentality, a different upbringing, a different experience. You could be sitting in the same place, in the same room, in the same workplace, and everyone's there for a different reason. So the why, first most important thing, figure out your why. And, and, and I'm saying that, and, and you might say, okay, yeah, it's easy. No, try to write it down. Try to enumerate what is your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? And I'm saying just in a normal life, why do you go to work? Like, emotionally why do you play sports why do you train or why do you why don't you do any of that you know what i mean so that's the first part let's continue with the story then i tell him roger there's a pot of gold right where i'm asking you to dig then i give him the why so he has the tools he has the objective digging and he has the why pot of gold let's say he, roger likes gold okay so I guess that's a fair assumption. Then he starts digging. He digs, you know, takes off his shirt, starting to be hot out there, he keeps digging. Then he stops and he asks me, Alex, are you playing a trick on me? Are you sure there's a pot of gold here? Because I've been digging. Then I say, yes, there is. Trust me. He looks at me. He keeps digging. You know, that trust keeps digging. Then he digs and he digs and I can look at him and, and start seeing like the digging slowing down and then the mind starting to roll and doubt starting to creep in. Then he stops again until I reassure him and say, keep digging, Roger, you're almost there. Then he starts digging again and he keeps digging. Then he stops and I reassure him again. Why I'm telling you that story, I'm trying to show you that right now, Roger is using an exterior motivator. He's using me motivating him, digging where he's digging. So there's a breaking point where Roger is gonna stop. Like I could continue and telling him, yes, yes, it's there. He's gonna stop. After 30 minutes, an hour, two hour, three hour, at some point he's gonna say, okay, I've been digging for all this time. There's nothing there. I'm going to stop until you give me 100% proof that it is there. So I'm going to continue with the story and then we'll go back to that. So let's say I show him a video of a company that came in with a machine and dug like a hole, like deep with a machine and then just dug. And then we show him the video of the pot of gold, pot of gold going down and then putting concrete or dirt or rocks over it. and then showing him where he's digging, that's the exact spot. At that point, most people, most people would continue digging because they've seen the proof, they know it's there. So they would keep digging and they would dig and they would actually take a break, go drink water, you know, maybe sleep, come back the next day, start digging in the same place because they know it's there. So why the rush if it takes a week? Two weeks, a year, two years, 10 years, he knows his pot of gold is there. So he's relaxed, no more anxiety. Now, most of the time we can't have that assurance. We can't have that video. 
we can't have that proof. So what's missing? I was talking about the exterior motivator that was me. But let's say that while digging, Roger decided to believe that the pot of gold was there for himself. Didn't need me to talk in his ear and reassure him. Just started to believe that it was there. The resolve would start building. The same as showing him a video. He would project himself. He would visualize that pot of gold in his hands. And the exact thing would happen. He would take a break, take water, go back to sleep, wait a year, two years, and know that he can come back and start digging because the pot of gold is there. So either he believes it within him and his beliefs and his mind and his visualization, or he needs an exterior person to give him. So what I'm saying here is most of the time you won't find that motivator outside. It is rare. No one's there to cheerlead. You don't have a cheerleader saying, yes, go, yes, go. You are the only one that can have your own beliefs and your own dreams. So that's where it comes from. Start building on that 80%. And that's just one part of it because it's not that easy to believe in something you haven't seen. It's not easy to believe that you made the right choice until you get to the pot of gold. The whole journey you're doubting, but your resolve and your belief has to be stronger than doubt. Doubt will always exist. Just put it in the back seat and say, it's gonna be okay. You know? So coming back to the different imperfections that I cited before, you know, like I wasn't that successful in those areas. But what I realize is I've been working like hard on all of those and everyone's working on them. We're working on upgrading our income. We're working on being better, more healthier. We're working on having a belief system, a good mindset. We are all doing it. But the difference is I've been quantifying it. I've been putting pen to paper actually scoring each of those groups, each of those pillars, if you want. Just grade them one to 10. Okay, how am I doing on the family front? How am I doing on my financials? How am I doing in my beliefs? How am I doing in my spirituality? How am I doing on my fitness? How am I doing in my connections with others in my network? How am I doing with family? How am I doing in my love life? Rate it from one to 10. Then once you start looking at the picture, then you start knowing where to work. And that's where I come in. I've been working on all of those pillars and I've been fighting equilibrium. And I think that's important. I think it's important to know your strengths and to know your weaknesses. I think it's important to know your dreams and to know your fear. I know that it's important to know what makes you sad as well as what makes you happy. Knowing what calms you and what angers you to your core. Accepting the light and taming the darkness. The yin and yang, if you want to call it that way. So the idea is that duality, is that equilibrium, is that going away from extremism, is finding that you are a multi-talented being. So when you find that equilibrium, when you have that clear mindset, you start getting realization that comes with humility, where you know that you're not perfect, but you know that you are working on all of your imperfections. And you know what? I've read somewhere that you need to be working on improving what you're good at already. Sometimes put aside some imperfections because just get better grades on what you're good at. And then after that, you go back and work on your imperfections. So that's what I've been doing. I've been working hard on the mindset. And right now, I'm working on the 20%. So right now, during the pandemic, I kept working with my nine to five job. But at the same time, I kept studying, listening to nonfiction books, listening to um, seminars, applying to master classes. And what it brought me is actually creating my podcast, 
I actually started multiple businesses online. One is running actually right now at this moment on Amazon called Lexca Brand. It's a company aimed at protecting the family of everyone that interacts with our brand. So we are actually a family business, me and my wife. And our motto is that we actually put safety of the families that we serve first. So that's one of the businesses. Then I have the podcast, Real Talk Guidance, that's actually on all major uh, platforms right now. And the idea of Real Talk Guidance is to inspire people, is to help bridge the gap between wanting and having the mindset that you need in order to focus on your future, on what you need, not what everybody else says that you need, not what everybody else says that success looks like. Is fighting you and realizing your true dreams. And then I have two other businesses that are in the works. And you'll be hearing about them really soon. So the idea here is that when you have a clear understanding of your strengths, then you start having clarity of purpose. The anxiety starts to subside and then you actually know where you want to go. And I, like I said, once you know, you start driving on your journey with a clear mind and a laser focus. And then you put fear in the back seat and you say, come along for the ride. I know you're there to protect me, but it's going to be okay. And that's a belief that you need to put first. And another belief, you have to make sure that you just want things for you. And, and I'm saying that, guys, don't take this lightly. We've been conditioned to want things around us as a society. We've been wanting things because we see they exist. But we have to go deeper and find out, do we really need those things? Is it really something that we need or the world told us that we needed it in order to feel happy? And that's the hardest thing to find out. We need to go deeper and find out for ourselves what, what is it that we want. And I, I think it's the hardest thing of all. Ask anyone. Ask them, what do you want? And they can't seem to give you a straight answer. Like it's, it's kind of the hardest thing, but how can you function as a sentient being, like going about your life without knowing what you want? Then you're turning in circles, then you're always confused. And confusion is the worst thing for prosperity. Confusion is the worst thing for, for, for peace. Confusion is, is, is the worst thing for for mutual understanding. And it's the worst thing for anxiety. Anxiety is based out of confusion. I've read a book about, you know, the human condition, a doctor from Australia. And he talks about that phase in a human that is growing and becoming an adult. And we all pass through it. And that's the adolescence phase. It's the most confusing times where you were a kid believing in certain things, dreaming about certain things, and you're becoming an adult and looking at the adults around you and looking at how they're living their life, how the sadness has taken their, their light away. And then you're in the middle, not quite a kid anymore, not quite an adult yet. And then you're confused about all your beliefs being crushed. You don't believe in Santa Claus anymore. And that crushes you. And you might think it's funny what I'm saying, but guys, this is the worst time for a human being and they need to be supported. Parents, support your child during that period because it's only because of confusion. When they go about you know, trying to find out who they are, what they believe in, they are, they are switching their beliefs and they need to be guided. Human condition the hurt that we feel because we are sentient beings. We were actually way before, and we're talking about biology, physiology, we're talking about philosophy, but at some point we talk about spirituality because when you look at Genesis, and I'm talking here about spirituality, not even religion, every book, religious book, 
they're, they're so powerful because they're at the same time the best nonfiction book written, but at the same time they have stories in them. Parables, that's like fiction. So it's like a mix. It's the best, best, best type of books because the idea behind it is to build upon your mind, build your beliefs. So Genesis, let's go back to that. When they talk about the, the treat of knowledge, so that means humans, you know, in our evolutionary, when we split from the monkey or the chimpanzee, the bonobo, you know, chimpanzee, um, we actually realized that knowledge came at a price, a hard price. We started to feel ashamed. Knowledge brings so many things that we have to deal with. And that's where the human condition comes from. We have two minds. We have the animal, animal, sorry, mind that is rooted in the middle of the brain, you know, our limbic system. It's like our reptilian brain, we call it, you know, the old brain that we share with other mammals, other species. And that's where we get what we call our instincts. So we have an instinctive mind. We have the subconscious mind. We have a mind that doesn't have language, doesn't speak, but feels deeply. And then we came with the neocortex. We came with knowledge. We came with language. We came with communication. And then we became two beings inside of one body going about the world doing different things. And duality started to exist within us. So we start being ashamed because we wanted to do things that the inner brain, the feeling brain, the reptilian brain wanted to do. And then it was judged by the neocortex, by the, the thoughtful, the language brain. That's what's happening. Everything we do, we, we, we actually judge ourselves. We are the worst, worst, worst person to actually motivate ourselves because we have that duality. And that's been going on for ages where we tell ourselves we are not worth it. We tell ourselves, why me? We tell ourselves, I am just this, I am just that. We belittle ourselves. We actually crush ourselves into submission. No one else is doing it. I can promise you, no one else is mean the way you are mean to yourself. So that's where the 80% works. 80% starts to asking yourself to be the nicest to you. Stop being nice to people around you. Be nice to you. Start shining bright like a sun. Blind everyone around you instead of crushing your light and dimming it because you don't think you're worth it. All that attention. You're not worth being pointed out. You're not worth being who you are. And I'm saying that like you have to respect everyone around you. Your freedoms stops when you um, when you step on others freedoms you know what i mean like that's that's where your freedom start stops when you you start stepping on other people's freedom but after that anything else is freedom if you're not stepping on anybody else's toes you know what i mean so this is deep this is why the 80 percent is important before you start on the 20 percent before you start on the what before you start on the how, work on the why. That's why that word at the beginning was super important. And this is what I'm doing, you know? I'm doing my, my journey and, I, and, I'm, and I'm actually sharing that journey with you, with, with my audience. And, and I think that's why I took this time to, 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 to explain that realiz realization that's happening right now. I'm still searching but I can still say right now with conviction that I'm getting closer. I feel it. And that's why I'm talking to you today because I feel I'm getting closer. This is accountability at its best, putting the word out there that I am on the right path and I'm on the journey. But first I had to realize it, you know, I want to inspire people. And I realized that I knew that since I was really young, so start going back to your youth. Do a reverse in your brain, like in your memory lane. Like, what did you want to do really when you were young? And usually you're right, because that's when you had the insight. That's where you were not scared of anything. That's when fear wasn't big enough. 
fear wasn't strong enough to hold you back and ask you to stay in your comfort zone. So go back, try to find out. And it might change. You know, I wanted to be a scientist. I did it. I went to school, I work in pharmaceutical. But at the end, I realized I wanted to inspire people. So I, I said I wanted to be a scientist because that's, at the time, that's what I felt was inspiring. Einstein was inspiring me at the time, really young. But now I feel that there's other ways of inspiring people and the world is changing. And we are going to be asked to be even more human because AI is coming. Artificial intelligence is gonna show us what's human and what's machine. It's gonna show us what part of us is just not human at all. Like total recall is not important anymore. It used to make us different. And I did a podcast that's gonna go out soon with Clifford Beaulieu. I'm sorry, Clifford Bushrow, my bad. And we did that podcast, episode eight. And we talk about this. We talk about like, the world is changing. People right now that are successful are the people that's gonna work the hardest. Because knowledge is free, it's for everyone. We can type any question into Google and find out right now. There's a way to search, there's a way to confirm information, but that's not gonna be the secret. So there's a, a lot of jobs that are gonna be lost and disappear in the next few years. It's inevitable. You can't stop progress. You can actually shape it, but you can't stop it. So we're gonna be faced to a reality where what is humanity? What makes us more human than machine? What makes us more efficient than the machine? And that's what's gonna happen. Jobs are gonna change. People are still gonna work. We're just gonna change the type of works that we do. There's gonna be more coding, more computer involvement. People are gonna be more inspired by um, creativity. People are gonna think more outside the box. We're not gonna be focusing. And, and, and we've seen the, the the evolution through time, you know? We, we used to work really hard working the land. Like many people used to work in the, in, 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 um, the farms until it changed, especially in, in um, developed countries where machine took over and then a few people are left controlling those machine. Then we change into an era of um, industrialization where we worked in fabricating, you know, the world that we live and right now, all the machines, everything around us. And then machine came into the industrialization world and took the jobs and started being more efficient at welding, doing other stuff. So we're shifting, we shifted through the actual services. So many people were shifting their actual uh, experience through, through services, you know, customer service, through uh, uh, facing uh, the demand the of customers, you know, trying to find out what customers want. Many great minds went to the marketing um, field in order to understand the psychology behind cons consumer psychology. So all of that is shifting and there's gonna be a shift. And the next shift right now is certain jobs, certain like, I don't wanna call them out, but let me give a few examples and that's my own opinion, okay? So that's only an opinion. I think that the basic jobs, like basic lawyers, general medicine, uh, pharmaceutical, uh, like basic pharmaceutical, like I think specialists will still be around for a long time, but those generalized, like generalized jobs can be transformed into AI bots. It's more efficient. Even like right now, I think it, it, an AI has a better rate of finding tumors on an X-ray, okay? because of, of machine learning, you train it to find those little dots where a human eye cannot see, you know? So knowing that, how can you be confident about the future? You need to be confident about your ability to be more human, be better than the machine. Don't try and compete with the machine. You won't compete on that field, but the machine cannot compete with your humanity. We are not close to creating an AI that feels, we are not close to creating an AI that can actually think like a human because we are not logical beings. We are illogical. We have gut feeling. We have beliefs and machines cannot have that because they are rooted in logic. So I call it the, opti the optimistic few. 
And that, that's who I'm talking to. Actually, I'm talking to only the optimistic few because a lot of people won't believe what I'm saying or won't even want to listen to the end because it's okay. The pessimi- the, the, they're pessimistic and, and it's, it's okay because they have, they, have, they have actually good reason to be pessimistic. But I choose to see the, the cup like half full instead of half empty because we're both right. So let me choose the right that's going to help me go towards my dream and keep the fuel entering my brain, showing me that there is a reason to go forward. So the optimistic few, that's, that's what I'm talking to. And that's, what I, that's who I want to inspire. Okay, so let's dream. Let's keep dreaming. Let's dream of a better world. Let's dream of peace. And that word peace is really controversial because I've seen like pageants, uh, I've seen Miss Universe where they would ask the contender like, what do you want? And they would say world peace. And then most people like in in developed countries would would grin and, and make a little laugh like, oh, again. But having interviewed women from, from that universe, you know, the pageantry universe, I understand where they're coming from because they go around and they visit other countries. They visit other communities. They see the hunger. They see wars. They see people displaced. So it's not a funny thing. It's not something to grin about. World peace is actually something we can ask for. You know? Why should it be a utopia? Why should it be taboo to ask for world peace? It, it's, it's attainable. Is it happening now? No, it's okay. But it is attainable. There's ways to do it. It's not my job to do it, but I just want to put it out there. Let's dream of a better world and let's dream of peace. It's a dream. I have the right to dream. <laughs> and you have the right too. So I want to, And on a good note, I want to tell you, every one of you, find people that inspire you. This is what I've done, and this has served me well. Find people that inspire you. Everyone has different people that inspire them because we all have different wants. But I'm going to repeat it one more time. Find people that inspire you so you can in turn inspire others. Thanks for listening. This was... Real Talk Guidance.